do, do you get the feeling that with uh, what we're learning about the brain, what we're learning about uh, data science, neuroscience, um, and uh, the willingness of people to uh, follow their curiosity about themselves, that we are on the verge of a very interesting period when it comes to knowing ourselves. I think it's really exciting. This is, we're just getting a little, dipping our toe in the water right now, but um, imagine what Watson could do um, with Pymetrics. Um, so uh, we're now gonna hear from uh, Andre Petchak, uh, who's going to uh, tell you a story about his work that's probably unlike uh, any other innovators that you'll meet here at this event. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, first I would like to introduce myself. I'm Andrei Peciak. I come from a tiny country, Slovenia. We have just 2 million population. You heard correctly, not 22 million population. And that's our institute. It's also a tiny institute, also <laughs> founded with very tiny founds. Uh, of course, it fits into the tiny country. But we work quite, <coughs> we do quite a great job. Do you have a cell phone? Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, uh, we do quite a good job. We do a lot on electric mobility, but uh, lately also on sustainable uh, mobility and sustainable energy. As you see, that's what we do. And for six people and some students, it's quite a lot. So our main vision and our main goal is to go sustainable, to go completely sustainable, but not we in Slovenia with the 2 million people and some 500 bears, but the whole world. Because we have the chance to go uh, sustainable. Technology allows it. So that's where we live. Uh, there is a tiny village somewhere there. And there is our, there is our institute based. So we have mountains around, and that's the view from the office. I'm sure you would all like to work in such an office. And of course, it's quite inspiring. You know, it's an inspiring environment, so we can combine nature with latest technical achievements. What is not hard, because Ljubljana University is only 25 miles from us. So we're, we are still very close to the source of knowledge, or at least some knowledge that we can achieve. And we like to join tradition with future. So our latest achievement, or what we are most proud of, is that we have implemented sustainable energy cycle into practice. <coughs> it's not just theory. We also want to show in practice what is possible today with today's technology. So what is it? If you Google, you will see you will not find anything, because we have just made this word like one month ago. First, we made the system work, and then we found the word, or made the word. <coughs> that is <coughs> simplify the system, how it works. So you have a renewable power plant. You have a house or an enterprise. You have, of course, a storage battery. But you have a different electric car. You have an electric car with more range and with battery, additional battery that can be taken out. Because, you know, normally electric cars are used only 50 to 100 miles per a day. And, <clears throat> but sometimes, like once in a week or once in 14 days, you use it for bigger distances. And in this case, you put in additional batteries. Those additional batteries serve as storage batteries during the week, during normal days. And in some special circumstances, like we had Two years ago, we had a problem with uh, falling ice, and the whole Slovenia was without electricity one week. We used even the whole big battery of the car, or not one car of more cars. So we can be off-grid all the time, but even without sun, we can sustain one month or even more. That's how it works during the night. Of course, if we wanted to do it, we first had to do a car with a really big range. Why? We wanted to show that it's possible that it's just a myth that cars cannot have, electric cars cannot have big range. 
So we made um, a car, a family car. Uh, here in America, you would say uh, maybe a small or, or compact size car, but in Europe, we say it's a big car. And we achieved 513 miles of uh, driving per single charge. We drove it uh, this year in Germany. It's a kind of world record with average speed of 45 miles per an hour and in normal traffic with all the traffic jams included and everything what could happen on a road. And it still weights less than 4,000 pounds. And we, if we had more resources, what we don't have, I'm sure it could weight not more than 3,000 pounds. So why we did it? It was basically a provocation, provocation for the big ones to show that it is possible. And if six people in a tiny institute can do it, then they could have done it b faster, better, and cheaper. So if they don't do it, that's probably no will, because otherwise they would have done it, for sure. Because you know how they do. Um, they make cars with 60 miles of range, and they say it's impossible to do something better or more. And that's why sustainable, uh, sustainable transport has not been implemented all over the world. Not yet, or it's, or it's coming. But it's coming for the last 10, 20 years. We always hear about tomorrow. And tomorrow comes, and there is still no sustainable energy around, or just a little tiny bit. Oh, you have to know that big car manufacturers don't like electric cars. <clears throat> it's just a myth what they do. They don't like it. Of course, they have to have it, but they make a very short range because they don't want to cannibalize their own uh, gasoline, electri gasoline cars, with the exception of Tesla. But Tesla, I don't consider a really big manufacturer. And then there are oil profits. Oil profits are immense <clears throat> because we are stealing something that doesn't belong to us. It belongs. It, it has been produced for millions of years, so it belongs to the whole humanity for the whole lifetime of, uh, that humanity will exist. We are not allowed to pump it out in 100 or 200 years. But of course, these profits <coughs> run many things, including the <coughs> state of terror that appeared in the Middle East. Could you imagine that this state of terror would live on, uh, so, uh, on sustainables? Like, they would be producing windmills or photovoltaics and selling it for such money? No, it wouldn't work. And that is the last thing, and that are we, people, our mind. I, I didn't know, but there were many speakers that were speaking about that. <clears throat> we hang on the old ways and refuse radical changes. And if we go sustainable, we have to solve this basic problem. Technology is ready. It's not about technology, it's about psychology. My father is a psychologist, and I found out after discovering the technical side that after the working 30 years on techniques, actually we have to solve our minds. We have to change our minds. Because the problem is that we are still the same. Genetically, we are the same as Roman soldiers. Because only 100 generations have passed, more exactly 99 generations since Julius Caesar. So we are the same, but the techniques we are operating is much, much more advanced and also much more dangerous. <clears throat> so if we continue the way we do now, that's like this, with 6,000 pounds driving one person from one part to another part of the city, we will probably end up like this. And don't, please don't think it's environmental. <laughs> because can you imagine five, six, seven billions of horses and the methane, they have the exhaust of methane, and the food they eat. So they are not environmental. We have to find another ways. And there are solutions, of course. We have to change our mind. And how to change our minds? By events like this. <clears throat> because we can spread information. And when I speak in our own home village, maybe only a few people hear me and some animals around that I can see through the window. But if you speak from New York, the whole world will hear you. It's a really good spot. I don't like it as a nature, but it's a really good spot to speak, about, to speak from here. So I'm really glad that such thing exists. And there is still hope. And hope are young generations. Maybe you don't believe it, but we have to educate them. We have to invest into education of young generations. And they are the ones who will lead the world tomorrow, not we. As you can see, the little guy is very happy 
sitting in, an, uh, uh, in the motor of the electric car. But could you imagine him sitting on a, a gas guzzler engine, a hot engine and stinky engine? For sure, he would be crying. So even small children know what is good and what is bad. <laughs> and as a conclusion, it's not my hobby. It's more the passion, the devotion. My hobby is climbing. More precisely, ice climbing, and through 30 years of ice climbing, I have seen proofs that climate is dramatically changing. Because I, know the, I have a notebook where I write all my climbs. And as the last slide, it, these are my fellows from the institute. Uh, they would like to send you regards. And I have to tell that what we did is the work of a team. And without this team, I would be nobody. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Andre. Um, please find him and ask him more details about the first bit of the presentation, what actually they do this cycle with the batteries, the solar collectors, the batteries, the car feeding back into the system. You, you're basically your car and your house uh, make the entire home sustainable uh, endlessly. Um, and uh, the Little Institute did it. Um, we are now going